Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. It's one of those days my inbox started piling up with emails from people saying, Steve, check this story out. And this is a story I must talk about. Sent to me by quite a few people, widely reported. The Hill.com's got the version I'm going to tell you about, but others have reported it as well. Monique Beals wrote this one. 131 federal judges failed to recuse themselves from cases in which they had a financial interest, according to a recently released report. 131 federal judges oversaw court cases. They were the judge hearing the case involving companies who were parties in those cases in which the judge or members of the judge's family owned stock, according to a new investigation. So I'll give you the hypothetical. The judge is on the bench. There's a case. Somebody's suing somebody else. One of those parties being sued or doing the suing is a corporation that sells stock publicly. And the judge or a member of the judge's family holds stock in that corporation, does not disclose it, and rules on the case. That's a problem. It's a violation of the rules, by the way, believe it or not. We'll get to that. Those judges violated U.S. law and judicial ethics by failing to recuse themselves from a total of 685 court cases in which they may have had a conflict of interest, and that's according to an investigation by the Wall Street Journal. Now, it does not take a rocket scientist to understand the two numbers there, 131 and 685. That does mean that it happened more than once with some of these judges, because 131 judges are involved in 685 cases. So across the country, there's federal courts with judges in them, federal judges, and a lot of cases involve corporations that sell stock. And it turns out that a lot of those cases that involved those entities were uh, overseen by judges who, in essence, had a stake in the outcome. In those cases, two-thirds of the rulings were in favor of the companies which held financial interest for the judge. And uh, here's a quote from Forbes. If you are a federal judge, you should not be holding individual stocks, said Andrew O'Connor, whose lawsuit against Comcast was sent to a state court by a judge of the U.S. District Court of Colorado. The case involving Comcast, Comcast wanted it sent to state court, and they apparently got their way. At the time, the judge who oversaw that ruling, or his family, owned at least $15,001 in Comcast stock, may have owned as much as $50,000. For his part, the judge said, I dropped the ball. His office did not have an adequate process for checking for conflicts of interest. He said, there are so many things wrong with that statement that I don't know where to begin, but I'll do my best. First of all, you might say, Steve, $15,001 to $50,000. Why doesn't he know? Well, he knows. But the disclosure forms that the government asks him to fill out say, do you own stock? Yes, no, and in what amounts? And they just have you check boxes with ranges. So he owns between $15,001 and $50,000 in stock, or his family members do. But again, that's what the form says. Do you or your family members own? And he said, yes, my family or I own this amount of stock in Comcast. He says his office did not have an adequate process for checking for conflicts of interest. He doesn't know that he owns stock in that company? Here's the thing. If you own stock, you should know it. It's not a surprise. And the idea that, well, you, Steve, maybe he owns so much stock, he can't keep track of it all. Well, he should know that there's a potential problem then. And this guy who's suggesting that if you are a federal judge, you should not be holding individual stocks, is pointing out that that is the easiest way out of this. Being a federal judge is one of the greatest jobs on earth. You are appointed for life, and it pays well, okay? A lifetime appointment, and it pays well. It's a great job. So if you get that job, one obvious thing you could do is get rid of your stock and sell it or keep track of it. But that is part of your job. You need to know if a corporation comes before you, Oh, I'm a shareholder in this corporation. I can't rule on this. I have to send this case down the hallway. It's not that big of a deal. But here's the problem. I've owned stock before. And I know that some people in my audience probably have as well. And 
When I own stock and I'm hearing the news and I hear someone mention the company I own stock in, I turn and look. <laughs> did they do something good or did they screw something up? Because it's going to affect me. So if I was a judge and I saw the case hit my desk, a lawsuit, ABC Corporation versus Acme Rocket Sleds, and I own stock in Acme Rocket Sleds, I'd remember, oh, that's right, I own stock in Acme Rocket Sleds. This case affects me. Therefore, I cannot hear same. But these cases took place in the time frame of 2010 to 2020. They did a 10-year study. And of the two-thirds of federal district judges who disclosed individual stock holdings, about 20% of them heard at least one case that involved their stock. So they were asked to fill out the form, do you own stock? Yes, in what? Yes, yes, yes. They fill all this stuff out. And then when the case crosses their desk, they don't notice it. I find it hard to believe. Uh, after the journal notified the judges of these findings, 56 of them began to alert parties involved in 329 lawsuits of the conflict of interest. So they actually said, oh, oh, and they went back and they started trying to tell people this. The question is, what can you do now? And number two, 56 of them, what about the others? So less than half actually started doing something about this. The judges gave the journal various explanations for failing to recuse themselves, including issues with conflict screening search software and their insignificant roles in cases that did not require legal exemptions. While nothing prohibits judges from holding stocks, the code of conduct for federal judges requires that they recuse themselves given any financial interest in a case or ownership of a legal or equitable interest, however small. And I'll get you the rule in a second, so don't worry about that. Uh, the Administrative Office of the U.S. Courts told uh, the Wall Street Journal, the Wall Street Journal's report on instances where conflicts inadvertently were not identified before a case was resolved or transferred is troubling, and the Administrative Office is carefully reviewing the matter. Inadvertently. I don't know that anybody has shown any evidence this was inadvertent. I I'm still having a hard time believing that you're a judge and you own stock and you don't know that you need to keep track of which stock you own so that when those parties appear in front of you, you can recuse yourself. You should know that. Okay, so the Hill has reached out to the administrative office of the U.S. courts for comment, but that's it. So that gets us then to what is the code of conduct for the United States judges and there's actually a code of conduct, rules, actual rules that are in place that every judge knows are there. And every state, by the way, has these for their state judges as well, every state I've heard of. And um, when it comes to federal courts, though, there's a federal set of rules that address the judges. And it talks about all the different things that they can and cannot do while they're judge. And like I said before, it's a lifetime appointment, which ain't a bad gig, a lifetime appointment. So when you get this gig and you're in, you're sworn in, it's, you know, it's cushy. It's, it's, you're on easy street, okay? Code of Conduct for U.S. Judges, Canon 3. They refer to them as the canons of judicial conduct. Number three, sub 1, and then it's sub C. So it's 3-1-C. I'm going to read it to you as best I can in, in reading it this way. A judge shall, shall disqualify himself or herself in a proceeding in which the judge's impartiality might reasonably be questioned, including but not limited to instances in which the judge knows that the judge individually or as a fiduciary or the judge's spouse or minor child residing in the judge's household has a financial interest in the subject matter in controversy or in a party to the proceeding or any other interest that could be affected substantially by the outcome of the proceeding. It's a bunch of stuff in there, but it basically says that the judge shall disqualify himself or herself because they have a financial interest, and notice this is individually or as a fiduciary or it's your spouse or your minor child. It's very, very broad, on purpose. And the idea that these judges, 131 of them, had stock in companies that were before them as parties and didn't disclose it and didn't disqualify themselves is a problem. Because you notice the rule says a judge shall. It doesn't say a judge may. It doesn't say a judge should. It says a judge shall. That is mandatory. That is required. 
That is something you must do. So the judge shall disqualify himself or herself in a proceeding in which the judge's impartiality might be reasonably questioned, blah, 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 blah. We've talked before, and by the way, elsewhere in the Code of Conduct, it does talk about not just avoiding impropriety. It talks about avoiding the appearance of impropriety. And you'll notice that a lot of these rules seem to overlap and kind of address the same kinds of things. An appearance of impropriety may or may not involve a stake in the outcome. There's all kinds of things that you can do that look bad or might look bad or might seem to look bad. But here it's very clear. If you've got a financial stake in this thing, you've got to disqualify yourself. You're required to. You shall disqualify yourself. So there are a series of problems that we're left with right now. You've got 131 judges who violated the code of conduct for U.S. judges. 131 appear to have done it. Of the 131, 56 of them have apparently already owned up to it and said, oh, we got a problem then, don't we? And have gone back and started notifying people and parties that, hey, there was a problem on your case. They get new trials, new cases. What happens if it happened nine years ago? You know, all kinds of stuff. And going forward, presumably, they'll behave better. Now they've been called out and they realize that they got caught, they'll, 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 they'll avoid it in the future, maybe? I don't know. Maybe they will. But the bigger problem is, let's suppose that in 2010, 2010, which is a while ago, in 2010, you brought a lawsuit. It was heard in federal court, and a judge ruled on that case adversely to you, and you lost. And that was in 2010. And now you discover that the judge you were in front of had a financial interest in the stake that was the other party. Financial interest in the other party. They held stock in that other party. What do you do now? You know, I mean, a lot of things can happen since 2010 that would mean that even though you found this out now, there's not a whole lot you can do about it. So it's, it's a mess, but it's one of these things where they are saying that it was inadvertent uh, and they're reviewing the matter, but that they um, uh, had issues with conflict checking software and they're blaming other people. And when you become a federal judge, it's a whole process. And I've actually talked about this briefly uh, a while back because when federal judges get appointed, there's a whole process for it. And somebody nominates a federal judge. And the federal judge then gets in front of a Senate hearing, and they have a hearing. And then after they pass that process, then they get seated. And once they're seated, assuming they've made the process all the way through, it's a lifetime appointment. And they know going in that as a federal judge, there are rules that apply to them. And among the rules that apply to them is the code of conduct for U.S. judges. And they know that there's a rule in there. Rule 3, 1C, that says specifically that they've got to disqualify themselves if they ever have a case where the parties before them present such a situation that the judge has a stake or the judge's family has a stake in one of these entities. They know that going in. So there's a couple things you got to do, one of which would be quite easy, would be to sell all your stock. If you don't want to do that, make a list of it and put it on your desk. And from time to time, when new cases get filed, glance at the list of stocks you want to go, oh, oh, here's a lawsuit being filed by the Acme Rocket Sled Company. I'm a stockholder. I must notify them of that. And this case must get sent down the hall to another judge who presumably does not own stock in the Acme Rocket Sled Company. They all know the rules there. 131 of them broke the rules and they broke the rules in 685 cases which does suggest that many of them broke the rules more than once. And that's a very serious problem. So some people often get upset with me. They say, Steve, you stopped. You didn't say what should happen here. What should happen here? Well, there's a process where judges can get called on the carpet and questioned about their behavior. Now, it's a lifetime appointment. But there are other things that can happen to you along the way. And there's a process. 
And I'm going to use the word, although some people are going to perk up because they've only heard it in other settings, but a judge can be impeached. A judge can be impeached, a federal judge. And I would suggest that the Judiciary Committee uh, take a look at this and ask themselves, and perhaps ask some judges, how is it possible that you forgot that you owned stock in these companies that appeared before you more than once? And they should go through the list of the 131 judges and find out the ones who did it more than once and say inadvertence or mistake is one of those things that you might be able to blame on one or two instances of something. I don't even think that makes sense here, but to do it several times is a problem. And it creates a mess because the mess has got to get cleaned up now. So the Judiciary Committee should be taking a look at this and asking themselves, how reasonable is it that these judges heard these cases and forgot that they owned stock in one of the parties before them. That's a, a, a bad, bad thing. So we'll see what happens. But the case is sent, a story is sent to me by a lot of people. Jason, Christine, Nick, Anthony, Paul, Shekhar, James, and David all said it. Thanks a lot. 131 federal judges failed to recuse themselves when required to do so from cases in which they had financial interest. Monique Beals wrote this version for TheHill.com, reported widely elsewhere, including Forbes and The Wall Street Journal. Questions or comments, please put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. It always seems impossible until it's done.